Hi, this is Amy, Master Herbalist and Naturopath, and today I want to talk to you about herbal properties. So herbs often have more than one property. So by knowing the different properties and, and um, what these properties are and what they mean and how they can be uh, used and applied, then you can substitute herbs. You don't have to be stuck with, you know, just this one herb for a certain condition. Like, um, so burdock, it's a diuretic and it's also alternative. Um, so by knowing that, then you know that you can use it for these different things. The herb properties of the herb, then it's easier to know how to use that herb. Now I want to go over these different herbal properties and then um, some of the common ones that will help you so that you can use herbs um, in a better way. So I want to show, so I want to show you an example here in uh, most herbal books and studies. They will give a list of of the properties of that herb. Um, sometimes they'll call it uh, properties. Most of the time it's called properties, um, but also it can be ca called um, action. So in this book right here. Um, practical herbalism. I've got a couple examples I want to show you here. So this is for burdock and right here it will show the action of the burdock root. Okay, alternative, alternative and diuretic and so forth. They'll have the action so that way you can know um, what it actually does, what action it has. Another common herb would be dandelion and so it goes into explaining about dandelion and then right down here, it'll have action. So it also is a diuretic, but it's also hepatic, okay? Which means it helps the liver, okay? So those are things that are good to know. And then it has, um, it's a bitter and so forth. So we're gonna go over some of those properties so you can learn some of the main ones and um, then you can understand more about the herbs and how to use them. Alternative is um, a turative. So, a turative is basically it's a blood purifying. So they this works in a very gradual gradual way on the body to change the condition of the body. Um, and it's used for more deeper conditions, chronic type conditions, blood infections, so toxicity of the blood, infections, arthritis, cancer, skin eruptions. Any kind of skin eruptions or skin problems is usually comes from dirty blood and it's more, it's a deeper condition. Um, so some uh, alternatives are um, red clover blossoms, excellent blood purifier, um, echinacea, dandelion root, um, alfalfa is another good one, marshmallow root is good, burdock, very good for um, cleaning the blood licorice root also, raspberry leaf, and um, white willow bark. These are all have properties of alternative. Alter and there are other herbs. These are some of the common ones. So the next um, property that I want to go over is uh, analgestic. So these are herbs, or what this does is basically it relieves pain. Okay, so this is a good one to know. So some of the herbs with this would be echinacea, chamomile, ginger, uh, lemongrass, uh, white willow bark, skullcap, turmeric, and valerian. These are all very good to help relieve pain. Anti-asthmatic would be anti-asthmatic. So this, um, according to the name, is it's going to relieve the symptoms of asthma. So there's there's different types of herbs. Um, so like lobelia it's uh, very strong and it's gonna dilate the bronchioles. Um, but other herbs will like break up the mucus or mullein, it can give some quick relief for anything with the lung, you can take it as a tea. So other um, anti-asthmatics would be ginseng, rebus, uh, wild cherry bark. So another property that is good to know would be the antibiotics. And we all know what that means. You know, it fights, these are substances, or in our case, because we're doing botanical medicine, 
herbs that inhibit the growth or destroy bacteria. So echinacea is the there's different, there's different types of herbs that help in this. Like there's a kind that will directly kill the bacteria. And then there's a kind that's going to stimulate the body's immune system. And then the immune system will kill that infection. So echinacea is the kind that, you know, the body that stimulates the body's immune system. So the body then fights the infection. Um, a few herbs along that line as an antibiotic would be the Lomatium dissectum, LDM. Spasmodics, these are herbs, spasmodics, these are herbs that will relax the muscle spasms. You can take them internally or you can apply them externally for relief. There's quite a few herbs that help with this. Um, some of them would be astragalus, cayenne, pepper, chamomile, skull cap, um, hops, lavender, lemon balm, mullein leaf, valerian, peppermint, passion flower, um, sage, spearmint, raspberry leaf. These all are antispasmodics. So this is a good one to know. Probably one of the strongest would be um, lobelia. Um, are herbs that constrict or it's good to know is astringents. These um, are herbs that constrict or bind. They have a binding effect. And they're commonly used to check hemorrhages and secretions. Swollen glands, swollen glands and hemorrhoids. So whenever there's inflammation, you sort of want to reduce that and you want to, um, you want an astringent, really. So a few good ones, a lot of these are um, barks. Um, but aloe vera is a good astringent, dandelion root, eye bright, cinnamon is considered an astringent, cayenne pepper, uh, um, a few others would be woolen leaf and peppermint, rosemary, sage, St. John's wort. So these are herbs and spices that help to relieve as a carminatives. So these are herbs and spices that help to relieve gas and just gripping and pain in the abdomen and the bowels. So some carminatives would be several, I'm sure that you already know, um, like peppermint, lemon balm, ginger, clove, cinnamon, chamomile. These all has, uh, have the carminative properties. Is uh, diaphoretic. So these are herbs that they will diaphoretic. So these are herbs that they will induce sweating. So this is important, like especially when there's toxicity or poisoning, you wanna try to sweat it out. So these will help the body to sweat. So some of these herbs are burdock, cayenne pepper, chamomile, elderberries, ginger, lemon balm, peppermint, and some spearmint. So whenever you take these, you want to make sure that you take them in tea hot. So that will help the body to sweat as well. Um, so another property is a diuretic. Diuretic is going to be herbs that will increase the flow of urine. And these, of course, this is, if the kidneys aren't functioning well, then these kind of herbs will help in that regard. So some of them are some diuretics are alfalfa, astragalus, elderberries, hibiscus flower, marshmallow, nettle leaf, burdock, dandelion, uh, red clover, yerba mate, and even hawthorn berries. So no wonder it helps the heart. It helps the heart in this regard as well. So these are diuretics. Another good one to know, good property to know is expectorant. So an expectorant are herbs that help in expelling mucus from the lungs and throat. So some of these are eyebright, fenugreek, ginseng, licorice, mullein, nettle leaf, red clover, slippery elm, and wild cherry bark. And of course there are more. These are just some of the common ones. Another good property to know is um, hemostatic. Hemostatic is uh, herbs that will arrest hemorrhaging. Okay, so they're gonna stop the bleeding. 
So you need to, it's good to know these. So um, they also include astringent properties and they help the blood coagulate. Um, top of the list is cayenne pepper, then also mullein, nettle, raspberry leaf, and there are others as well. I don't know what this is. Um, this would be to promote good, this would be to promote good proper bowel movement. So there are there are those that are purgative. So purgatives would be stronger than a laxative, and there's different levels in, in both of them as well. So some laxatives would be aloe vera, uh, black walnut bark, um, licorice, yerba mate, um, even burdock that calm nervous tension. They just calm and they nourish the nervous system. Calm nervous tension. They just calm and they nourish the nervous system. So these are good to know as well. So this is going to be chamomile and hops, passion flower, um, rosemary, valerian. These are good nervines. Be the sedatives. So these would be herbs that are strong. They're pretty strong and they quiet the nervous system. They would include the antispasmodic and nervine herbs. So some useful sedatives would be valerian, hops, chamomile, passion flower, St. John's wort, uh, wild cherry bark, and skullcap. Skullcap is a good one for helping you to go to sleep as well, as it will calm the mind from wandering. So these are herbs that will increase the energy in the body and they'll drive the circulation. So these are herbs that will increase the energy in the body and they'll drive the circulation. They're gonna break up obstructions and warm the body. So some of these would be cayenne pepper, cinnamon, echinacea, euthyrococcus, ginseng, ginger, and ginkgo, bibloba, sage, peppermint, raspberry leaf, and others as well. Herbs that encourage the healing of wounds and promote cell growth and repair. So some of these are aloe vera, cayenne pepper, fenugreek, ginseng, mullein, comfrey, marshmallow root, slippery elm bark. So that's the end of this study of um, the medicinal properties in herbs. And I hope this has been helpful and I hope to see you another time. Take care.